Hey, Hickok 45 here. Some people claim to have a green thumb. I happen to have a Glock thumb. Ah, pretty funny, huh? 10 millimeter, Glock 20. We're going to uh, shoot it today, test a little ammo. Got some uh, 230 grain hard cast bullets, double tap. And uh, see what we have here. You might find these interesting. Usually when we uh, think of 230 grain bullets in a handgun, we think of what? The old 1911 standard hardball, don't we? Well, I didn't even know they loaded these uh, bullets this heavy until recently and just figured I needed to try those and to have some of those because that is a uh, big bullet. Think about how deep that must go in order to, uh, to be that heavy. It must go way down in there, 230 grains. And look at the face on that dude. Whew. That is a, a bear load, if there ever was one, I guess, in a 10 millimeter. All right, so 230 grains of lead, same weight as the standard uh, 1911 45 ACP load in a 10 millimeter. And we're supposedly trucking at 1120 feet per second. I haven't chronographed it. I uh, have an old chronograph. I don't get it out very often. I don't, you know, I don't get into that as much as, as some people. Uh, anyway. These are cast bullets, they're hard cast bullets, and these are uh, gas checked, which means they have a little copper plate, uh, I guess it's copper, on the base of the bullet. And so they're, uh, they're okay to shoot through a Glock stock barrel, apparently. And uh, that's what we're gonna do. Now generally you don't wanna shoot cast bullets through a stock Glock barrel, you want an aftermarket barrel. But these supposedly don't lead the, the barrel uh, and, and you don't have that problem, okay? So we're gonna shoot some of those and a couple of different distances and play with them. Uh, this is a kind of load that, you know, people are always asking, uh, you know, gun riders. Uh, I get the question a lot about what's the best gun to carry if you're gonna carry a handgun, you know, in the mountains and you don't wanna carry a rifle or you just can't be bothered with a rifle. And of course, you have all kinds of opinions on that. You don't expect or wanna run into a bear or a grizzly or anything uh, without something, but, uh, yeah, there are people who carry a really hot 44 Magnum with a heavy cast bullet like that, or a 454 Casol, or all kinds of things. Uh, uh, I'm not so sure that a 10 millimeter like this with a bullet like that would be any less effective than a really hot 44 Magnum. I don't know, penetration is what you're going for, and if you don't hit that grizzly in the right place, it doesn't matter what you're shooting with, uh, you're going to be dinner, you know. So, you know, this thing ought to penetrate about as well as most 44 rounds, I would guess. Don't know. Anyway, we're going to just play with it some. We're not going to do anything too scientific. You know, uh, we're just going to shoot some. We've got some cinder blocks down here. We're going to shoot it across the hill, maybe even a little bit on paper, some wood, you know, and just get an idea of, uh, of how it does, maybe even a little bit of comparison. I don't know. Let's put some in here. These are big old heavy bullets. They, uh, they feel kind of unusual in being this heavy. When you get 15 of these things in a magazine, uh, you have a lot of weight. So let's uh, go ahead and charge some of them up. And, and I think if we hit a pig or something over there on the hill, they will probably knock it over. That is a big chunk of lead, a long chunk of lead. I've not seen one outside the case. And like I said, it has to be a long bullet. And that bullet would have a really good, if uh, you know what ballistic coefficient means, I sort of do, I don't want to explain it now, but because of the length and the weight of this bullet, it would uh, have a very high ballistic coefficient. All right. Let's try it out here. Let's go for Mr. Pig. <laughs> All right, uh, let's try it on paper before I jump back. I don't know, 
know about that. I think I might need to pull out my reserve barrel. Let's try the old lone wolf barrel with these babies. And see if we get any better results. 10 millimeter lone wolf barrel, of course. And I don't see any leading. Looks good. bullets. These are cheap. They only run about uh, pretty close to a dollar a shot, I guess, by the time you pay shipping and everything on them. But uh, if you wanted something for bear country, doesn't matter what it costs, does it? You're not going to shoot a lot of them. But I thought I'd shoot a few and test them for you today. All right, let's try the lone wolf barrel. I'm going to try to hold the same place on that pig. Well, try the other pig down below him. Try the turkey. Let's try a couple of rams. Let's put these on paper from that. Oh, I can't see it, but I think those are in the black, maybe. All right. So, that bullet seems... Seems really nice and accurate out of the lone wolf barrel. Uh, so uh, I think we'll just stick with the lone wolf barrel. A uh, little confession time here. I've actually shot it a few times from the stock Glock barrel. And I was having bullets doing just what you saw. And I wanted to make sure before <laughs> I put it on video, but the first time I shot them, and, and they're great, they don't lead the barrel at all. It's just as slick and clean as it could be. But uh, I didn't know what was happening. I was bearing down, really doing my best shooting on a small target across the hill, and it was snow covered at the time, and I was seeing bullets hit up there and over here and all over the place. So at least with my particular barrel, uh, and I doubt it's all that different from your Glock 20 barrel that came with your gun, uh, don't want to shoot them out of that. Uh, incredibly inaccurate. Okay, so now let's get on with uh, seeing what they'll do with some of these blocks down here. Uh, and I don't know that they'll be all that different from my standard uh, 180 grain, you know, bullets. You know, I don't know. 10 millimeter is a hot round. Uh, let's face it; it's gonna, it's going to penetrate. Uh, but where this one is 230 grains, and it's going over 1,100 feet per second, you noticed uh, it took those rams and everything over pretty well. It wasn't like a 45-70 hit it, hitting them, but. Uh, they went on down. It wasn't like with uh, some, most handguns actually, you hit them and you wonder if they're gonna fall. Cause those are heavy, those are heavy targets. You remember from the, uh, the range tour, they, uh, they do uh, need to be hit hard to, to be knocked over usually. And sometimes if they're set hard, they, they'll hardly fall over with anything except the rifle round. So let's move on. We wanna do two or three different things here. Just playing, this is not uh, the ultimate science. Uh, and I know there'll be people that uh, hardly ever get to the range and hardly ever shoot that'll pick apart what we're doing here. And well, why didn't you attach this round? And uh, your wood didn't look very uh, consistent. And uh, you really, to make it uh, uh, authentic uh, and scientific, you should have tested with this barrel and uh, those rounds and compared them and all that. Well, you know, you know me, I don't get into all that. I just want to know basically if this is something I feel comfortable with in the mountains. Okay, uh, with anything that's on four legs that might uh, want to try to have me for dinner. So, and I think a 10 millimeter and uh, any good bullet uh, is going to be pretty comforting in the mountains, to tell you the truth. Let's, uh, let's do another unscientific test. I'm going to shoot uh, 
the blocks on the barrel there. Let's see, I'm going to shoot the one on the right and the lower one on the right with this bullet, okay? The double tap bullet. And let's see what we get. I don't want to get too close. I'm sure my glasses are on. We're all protected here. Okay. I want to try to hit him right in the center. Then we might go down and take a look after we've uh, done some shooting here. Let's, uh, let's put in a couple of standard 180 grain rounds that we norm most of us normally load and shoot now and try the blocks on the left. And there may not really be significant difference, if any. There's so many variables, you know, where you hit and all that. Well, that's a good shot. Wish I'd have done that on the other one. Well, I don't know. On first glance, it looks to me like uh, maybe the standard rounds didn't have as much impact. You know, before I put this gun, these bullets out, I'm going to shoot at that uh, second paper target just for the heck of it. Uh, let's go see what we got. Want to? First off, on the paper over here, I think uh, you all saw it better than I did because I think uh, the cameraman was zoomed in. I believe these were mostly from the uh, Lone Wolf Barrel, if I'm not mistaken. And then we had some of these flyers from the, and that isn't really all that far away, uh, from the uh, uh, stock lock barrel. In fact, that one right there, I believe, is one that tumbled, because that's something I was actually getting uh, earlier on. If we can zoom down here earlier, I was backing up to the driveway and shooting down at this cardboard. I was actually holding down here at the bottom of this cardboard, and one hit all the way up there. And then I was about twice the distance, but, you know, I'm not that bad a shot. And these are actually single hits. That's a single hit, and below it, a single hit. I know that for a fact. Uh, that was out of the stock barrel, so I was probably at about 30 yards. 30 yards, and they tumbled. And I have had them tumble even at 20 yards. That's why I'm thinking that one actually is a, a tumbler right there. But I know those for a fact are, well, you may know because you were watching them hit if we had any zoom, and they may not be. But I know that one was, and that one was. So uh, out of the stock barrel, at least my stock barrel, they just don't work so well. But, boy, they, they feel good. They really feel warm. And, yeah, look at that. This one went all the way through. Now, that was the uh, regular 180-grain barrel bullet, and it didn't really do anything to the second wall there. I guess that one hit it hard and uh, broke that corner out. So it seemed to have a little more impact. Let's see what we got down here. This is actually a corner block, so it's a little harder. Hit that right in the middle, just about broke that in half. And let's see on the other one. <coughs> now we're talking about the 180 grain bullets again on this block. Went through, don't really see anything on the second wall. Uh, got through that. Looks to me like what it, what's happening here is the 180 grain bullets are, are going through the first layer okay but uh, they just do get through it, whereas these uh, double taps seem to go through and hit hard. That's a thick wall in the center there, so I wouldn't expect it to go through two walls. It's not a 45-70, and that one caught right at the joint, but uh, that's why. So that hit solid concrete right there, basically, on the joint. But uh, uh, nice round, nice round. Lots of, lots of power there. Again, that's not really that scientific. 
Uh, but you know, in a way, if a bear's charging you, uh, or a terrorist with an AK-47, he's trying to get the bolt worked and get up into action, I tell you, 20 grains, 30 grains of uh, lead, or uh, another 200 feet per second, I'm not so sure that is nearly as important as where that bullet hits, you know, uh, the physics of it. You know, it's just bullet placement is so much more important, but you want a bullet that of course is gonna penetrate if you got big old grizz coming after you. Uh, you know, to me that looks like a pretty good, uh, let me shoot a couple more just into those same blocks. Since, since these are cheap, they seem to shoot uh, really well out of this aftermarket barrel. Nice. I'm gonna shoot that plate on the right. Yeah, I can tell by the way it swings the plate. Uh, it definitely has some energy. And uh, those of you who have shot a 10 millimeter, you know that the old Glock handles the recoil really well. It's, it's very comfortable. It's still comfortable with that, but boy, you can tell it's boom. It's, it's really coming back at you, but it feels good uh, like a Glock always does. But you can tell you got lots of energy going out. You got a hard bullet with a lot of weight to it. I like that round. Uh, if I were now that's legal, uh, you know, if I were into the mountains now in a park or wherever, I might just think about uh, packing those maybe in the Glock 29. But uh, that's a that's a nice round. Uh, uh, probably more of you have tried the 200 grain uh, in the same configuration. But I thought, well, what the heck? I'll try the 230. Well, I think what's happening. Uh, and I've written uh, double tap about this, communicated with the owner of that. The, uh, I, th I think the uh, Glock barrel just doesn't stabilize a heavy barrel, bullet like that. It just doesn't stabilize it, uh, maybe particularly since it's hard cast instead of a jacketed bullet. So that's obviously what it is. You don't get tumbling at 30 yards and, and maybe even a 20, uh, you know, unless there's a situation going on like that. So we got standard rifling in the aftermarket barrels. Uh, that's why they're designed for lead bullets and, and uh, shoot those much better and more safely. Uh, different kind of rifling. Okay, so it'll stabilize that bullet. Uh, accuracy looked really good. It felt really good to me over there uh, on those animals. I, I don't remember if I even missed it. They just, they just felt good. Let's try two at the gong just for kicks while we're doing it. It seems to be a very accurate round. You got the right barrel in your gun. And let's see, I don't want to shoot them all up here because we've got another idea here. I'll just shoot a couple. Let me put my ears in. Oh. Yeah. Looks nice. Looks nice. Okay, the last thing we're going to do here, again, we're not worried about how scientific it is, but I'm going to, we're going to go down here. I'm going to shoot some wood. We've got some wood set up, some old timbers we just laid together. And, and just for kicks, uh, we're going to shoot some of my standard loads, 180 grain loads. Uh, and then we're going to shoot a hollow point, uh, double tap hollow point, 180 grain, gold dot bullet in it. All right. Where are those I have? <clears throat> there they are. Okay, so there we've got the double tap hollow point, the gold dot. Got some more of these babies, 230 grain bullets. And then some 180 grain uh, hand loads. All right, and in some other 10 millimeter testing I've done, these are, uh, my hand loads are very comparable to any of your standard uh, factory loads that I have fired. Okay. So, I've got what I need. We'll see what happens here. I'm going to sit down right here and get the right angle on this. And I'm going to try to shoot these babies. 
I'm going to start with a hollow point over on the left. Get a couple of shots. Okay. My hand loads. Now the big boys, 230 grain. And we've got a cinder block sitting there where I'm going to shoot. Now I've got to be careful not to miss. I don't want to hit the cinder block. Probably okay, but I'm kind of close. So, but we've got him there. We've got about four layers of, uh, of timber. Uh, those are landscaping tenders turned sideways. So uh, I don't think it's going to go through all four of those landscaping tender, uh, timbers. But just in case it does, bullet in there. Okay, we'll just lay him right there. Right, I don't know if we can tell anything out of this, but uh, let's see. Yeah, I guess we didn't go all the way through on anything. Let's see. I can see them. Yeah, there's a there's a couple of uh, of the hard cast 230 grain bullets right there. They went through two of those landscaping timbers. Yeah, and stuck and lodged into that one. So it looks like it got through two of them. Okay. And over in here, let's see, I was shooting. Uh, uh, my hand loads and I don't see anything that got through into that third one Looks like they went through the first one probably and lodged in the second one and the hollow points Probably the same thing because they're going to open up very very quickly and uh, not get, get much penetration That was just for kind of kicks. I did shoot on the end over here a couple of shots Yeah, now that one looks like it went all the way. I thought I saw something hit over there I think this one went all the way through both of these timbers looks like both of them might have those were the 230 grainers so we're talking about going through a couple and lodging in the third one I guess on the on those bullets yeah so, I don't know probably put up too much timber there but just want to get an idea if I've got a bullet in a handgun that will go through two landscaping timbers that old treated stuff even though those are, you know, in various for, uh, condition there, depending on which end you're on. Uh, if I've got a gun that'll, that'll shoot a handgun bullet through a couple of uh, thick landscaping timbers like that, you know, I figure it's going to go, probably get through enough bone to stop Mr. Grizz, you know, you hope anyway. Uh, so, I don't know if this tells you anything uh, other than the 10 millimeter is a pretty powerful round. It, uh, you know, it's, it's a... <laughs> It's just a powerful round, and uh, you want to make sure you got the right barrel in your gun. Uh, again, uh, I tried three or four different tests. Well, four. This is the fourth time in terms of shooting uh, those heavy cast bullets out of my stock barrel. So you might try. You might get a different result at home. But uh, as for me, I won't be carrying them in uh, the stock Glock barrel. Now, maybe if the Grizz is right up on me, it wouldn't matter. But when I got bullets tumbling uh, at, at that kind of distance. Uh, it's just telling me that the barrel won't stabilize stabilize the bullet. So, not too scientific, but just some uh, food for thought with a 10 millimeter and two or three different bullets. So, take it for what it's worth, and uh, talk to y'all later.